X27, 21 to 26. Since they have been without food for a long time, Paul stood up among them and said, Man, you have you should have listened to me and not sell set sail from Crete and incur this injury and loss. But now I urge you to take food, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. So now Paul was in this ship with 276 sailors and prisoners combined and uh, going to Crete from, from Greece, I believe. And uh, and God appeared to uh, the Lord Jesus, uh, gave the vision, uh, the path, uh, uh, angel of God appeared to Paul the night before. Verse 23, for this very night, there stood before me an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I worship. And he said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. And behold, God has granted you all those who sailed with you. Okay. Now, this is, let's unpack this. This, this is huge. First, God said, Paul, don't be afraid. You must stand before Caesar. This is almost like um, the typical line the Lord tells everybody, you know, all his disciples. When you face persecutions and trials, you appear before governors and emperors and people in authority to to testify for me to witness for me in actuality cases like this are actually an opening window for god to demonstrate and show his glory but what kind of glory are we talking about here well paul had a chance to to witness and testify the resurrection of christ that jesus is the son of god the messiah you know at that time messiah is a big name over over now in in, in America, in today, whatever, 20, in this 21st century, 2024, when you say Messiah, people, it doesn't, it doesn't ring a bell. But uh, what rings a bell is what gives you the solutions in life. Anyhow, but we need a savior, okay? I think even now in, in America, in New York City, people need savior. Look around the world today. We have two wars going on. This is election year. There's so much lies and hypocrisy. Everything is just kind of, uh, it's kind of uh, muffling, is kind of it's so satin, saddening, and the destructive forces at work. And But you see that night, God, God told, uh, angel of God told Paul, do not be afraid, Paul. First thing, don't be afraid. You know, when we look at the things going on in the world, we feel like, oh, we, we are afraid or we, we, we got to be concerned. Yes, we should be concerned. We should be praying, but don't be afraid. No matter what, our God will win. Okay, so that's a message I want to po point out there. But the second message is that you must stand before Caesar. Now, as I explained, this is a way for God to have his choice people to testify before authority, before government, so that the whole world knows. In spite of persecutions, in spite of the dangers of being killed or persecuted or tortured or whatever the case may be, that's how God works. God doesn't say, oh, Paul, I'm going to, I'm going to free you now. I'm going to knock down all the soldiers trying to arrest you. All those Phyllis, uh, plus, uh, those uh, rabbi, Pharisees, Pharisees, rabbi, I'm going to knock them down. Don't worry, I'm going to set you free. That's, that's not the way God works because it doesn't give room for for a choice servant like Paul to, to have the opportunity to testify and preach the gospel. You see, you must stand before Caesar. Don't worry, the ship won't sink and God has given all those who sail with you. So take heart, uh, for I have, and Paul says, take heart, man, for I have faith in God that you will be exactly as I've been told. So this is what is called predestination. God for ordination, for ordain, for ordain. Everything's for ordain. Praise the Lord.